And we're dreaming. What's going on, Jiggly Dreamers? Mathras here with another episode of Classy Friday. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Can you? We'll find out. I believe Mega Aerodactyl outspeeds Mega Beedrill. Oh shit, I forgot uh, to not do the arrow, aerodactyl, yes, aerodactyl does that speed mega bee drill, and I apologize to my opponent for accidentally putting that up, just kind of, just, just checking, just checking, but uh, actually Trick Room Reuniclus completely bodies this guy. Once I just like work on these three a little bit, if I just get damage on these three right here, I can just completely ruin them. So I think that will be the plan with this team. I'm just going to lead straight off with this thing. As he does lead with the B drill. So I have no qualms going right for that aerial ace. Should KO. He'll have to go for protect here, but since he needs the protect to get the speed boost, and I outspeed him already, there's no real point in you know. He'll get his Mega Evolution and then switch out, I guess, but like... Oh really? Color for Aerodactyl is purple. I would have gone like gray or something, but I guess he's that purple under his wings, but like... That's not a lot, that's, that's a small amount of him. Small surface area. And you know what's the nice thing is like... What does he have to switch into this thing? I guess... The Rotom. It's gonna take neutral damage. Oof, alright. Scarf will outspeed me, unfortunately. But what I can do is go into Sky because Scotty can eat up both stabs from this thing as he does go for the Will O Wisp. That is also nice. Yeah, it wasn't really worth going for like a. What's the word? Going for a. Um, Stone Edge there, just in case I happen to miss, as he does turn, switch into Beedrill now, which means I can go right back onto Aerodactyl, which is absolutely awesome. And I can just click Aerial Ace once again. I think like, even like a max HP, max defense Beedrill is not going to live an Aerial Ace from an Mega Aerodactyl. And like, also, uh, no speed or attack invested Mega Beedrill is also something I wouldn't have to worry about at all. <laughs> so it also can't touch me with, really, can't really touch me with Poison, Jab, or U-Turn. So we are able to KO the Mega Beedrill, which is a nice offensive threat that we get to take off the field. And I still have my safe switch into this thing is my, uh, my Whimsicott as he does go for the Volt Switch. He could go into the... Cobalion right here, or the Nidoking. King. That, that too, that too. Um, let's see. Could go for the Gator Sweep right here. I think I might just go for it, just to like kind of get damage on the Melodic and uh, the Cobalion maybe, and try to just weaken it for my Trick Room Sweep. Because I can set up a trick room on like the Rotom and the Milotic, so yeah, I'm gonna go for that. So the King is gonna be down to half special attack. Let's just go. Ooh, he's physical. Okay, uh, but I'm still just gonna go right into my Gator. That's kind of the idea behind this team was Whimsicott with Mento, so I can just like switch out, and then I have uh, Hone Closet or Dactyl, Dragon Dance, Gator, and Trick Room for Uniclus, So. Uh, Wimsicott kind of just kind of sacrifices itself and lets one of my other Pokemon start to set up as he goes into Melodic. I don't know how much a Crunch is going to be doing to this thing, but I kind of just want to go to plus two. Do I want to risk the Scald, though? That's the problem. Let's do a quick Calc. See how much... Uh, oh, man. See how much... I thought it was supposed to come up in the middle. Whatever. See how much a Crunch does. Plus one crunch and see if we need to go to try to go to plus two come on calc come on I'm trying not to waste time here 
for alligator. Are you dragon dance? Still says are you dragon dance? My lodic. Ah, why is it? Give me crunch. Wow, why does that do zero? Are you kidding me? That's such. That's awful. Hmm. Problem is, I don't really have a switch in. Let's just go for damage, I guess. Okay, he's specially defensive. Wow. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to go for plus two now since he is he has eliminated the possibility that he could get a scald burn. He could definitely recover, but I think at plus two, he's not going to be able to. Even while I'm at plus one, he's not going to be able to do enough. As the Cobalion comes out, and I should be able to outspeed this thing now and hit it with an earthquake. So Gator, a huge threat in UU. Yeah, this this team is basically just. A pile of offensive threats as he does switch in the Rotom. Nice play, nice play. Doing a little toxic stall, but. Crunch is enough to take out the Rotom. And the Melodic is at a point where uh, I could definitely finish it off with the Trick Room Uniclus. Potentially, hopefully. And uh, the Cobalion is still a little threatening, but. Not that worried about it. I want to predict the Cobalion. I think that's what he's trying to bait the dark attack. So he can get the attack boost. Hmm. I think I'm good though. I don't think I need to predict that. This crunch times two crunch is still going to be doing a solid amount. And he also still doesn't outspeed me. As long as I live the toxic. Which I do. So I can just go for waterfall. Like that was a, I, that was a good play on his part, but not good enough because he's still slower. If I was at plus one, maybe outsped. I'm not sure. It's a base 100. I think it's base like one. Cobra line. He switches to melodic and just lets that thing go down. 108. So yeah, not quite 110. He seems to have all physical things left, so I'm just going to go into this guy right here. And, um, let's go for a knockoff, I guess. He's going to damage himself with Rocky Helmet, so I'll just get a little extra damage. He does go for Ice Punch, damn. As we're able to knock off that life orb. And I can just go for Roost, honestly. I think he's not doing enough, especially with the life orb gone. And I'm do still doing him damage with Rocky Helmet, so that's the plan. Hmm, this could be my t potentially my um, Trick Room setup, but I'm still scared of the Cobalion. I don't think uh, Soft Serve can still take a hit from the Cobalion, and then it, 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 Oko it in return. But you know what? We have the Calc up. Let's put a Reuniclus, uh, oh, your Trick Room, and uh, Cobalion. Yeah, we haven't seen Swords Dance, but uh, that's what, I guess that's my biggest fear. Oh, geez, really? Do I have 64 defense investment? I don't think I do, but still. Yeah, I'm going to go for a U-turn. Into my... Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Trying to predict... Like, I'm not going to go for two knockoffs, man. Alright, soft serve comes out. And let's go for that trick room. How much did Psychic do to it? Oh, yeah. We're good. We're good. We are so good. This is max attack. Yeah. Uh, he could be Sash Ape, but like, what does Ape have to hit Uniclus as he pulls the switch? So, gone. I just click Psychic for the win, pretty much. Oh, he's actually got the Sucker Punch. Not bad. 
Okay, okay. I see you, big dog. Nidoking, King, physical Nidoking King is underrated. Might have to try that in a future live. <sighs> but we got, still got the Cobalion, we got the Runicles, he, or not the Runicles, the Infernape. He definitely could finish me off with these, with the combination of these two. Uh, but I should be able to take this thing out. Unless he's like defense invested. Nah, gone. Uh, so he could be Sash, uh, like hit me with an overheat or something, like that's all he got. Mock punch. Like, I think overheat would be his best move to hit me with. And of course that's only if he is a sash set. And he didn't lead with it, so like what are the chances? Yeah, gone. GG. So that's an awesome soft serve cleaning up at the end there. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but I will pause it till we get another one, guys, so we'll be right back. Alright guys, we are back. And uh, this guy's got this kind of scary team. Uh, he's got Sticky Web, Galvantula, potentially leading with a Zelf as well. Also got a Shell Smash and Coyster, which is always kind of scary. Uh, as well as a Dual Blade, a Rotom, and a Crocodile, which are just really tough things to deal with. Um, but, I do see potential for a uh, Dragon Dance Gator Sweep. Um, unfortunately, like... Reuniclus and Aerodactyl don't really do that much in this game. I can lead with it though and kind of try to counter his Galvantula lead if that is what he wants to lead with. I would guess that's his lead and he has uh, uh, as Elf as like more of an offensive thing or he could have both leads but that would be weird. See so yeah, I'm gonna guess... Ah he lead with the Azelf. Fine. I kind of want to just like go for Stone Edge. Maybe go for Cone Claws. Maybe go for Mandibus. I don't know. Yeah, this is weird. <sighs> he's probably just going to go for Rocks. I guess he's just going to go for Rocks. He switches into the Crocodile. Does he have Intimidate? No. Oh baby, we good. Okay, <laughs> he's Scarf, but we live. <laughs> That's the good thing about Aerodactyls. It does get a little bit more bulky. Man, that was... how we got really scared when he went for Stone Edge. That bulk, son. Run Adamant Scarf, if you want. <laughs> If it's 50%, that means it wasn't a roll. That means I was guaranteed to live there. Yeah, I don't have anything for this, though. So this thing is... kind of useful for the Galvantula. I might hold on to it. But... Yeah, actually, yes, I definitely will hold on to it because Mandibus is a hard counter of this thing. He goes for Shadow Sneak, we eat it up, and he takes actually more damage than we took, so I can go for a free knockoff here. Uh, he might just want to go for like a Swords Dance or something, but if I were him, I would switch. But that's because I'm very familiar with my Mandibus set. Uh, yeah, getting rid of anything's item is actually really nice. Getting rid of Rotom, let's see what kind of set it was. It was leftover, so that's great. Great to get rid of those. As I kind of want to go make boss, but if it was my bulky RK9, I'd go for that. But I'm actually running an offensive one this time because I just love offensive RK9. RK9 is my favorite Pokemon, guys. If you did not know, uh, I'm tempted to go Scotty just just, uh, but the um, fire type move is very threatening. So what I could do is potentially encore the uh, dual blade into swords dance or the sh shell smash <laughs> encore cloister into shell smash or even galvantula into sticky web so like encore is a really useful thing also memento is really nice so it's tough to risk that thing so I think I'll actually risk soft serve because soft serve doesn't really help me that much 
in this match as you just go for the Volt Switch. I could definitely go into Dual Blade here. But I do have Shadow Ball, so that, that would do a nice amount of damage. I think I'd live at least one Shadow Sneak. And I'm not scared of his Dual Blade either because uh, Mandibuzz completely destroys it, shuts it down. Even if he gets to like plus like three. As the Azelf decides to come out. I can take a hit from this thing. Goes for Stealth Rock. As he lives on the Sash. I feel like he's going to explode. So I'm going to recover. Ah, he goes for the knockoff. Okay. Uh, but I think I can stall this thing out a little bit. Get, get to a higher amount of HP. As he goes for the U-turn. Wow. Uh, let's see what he goes into, though. He couldn't go into the Dual Blade because the Shadow Ball is definitely an option for me. He goes to Galvantula. All right. I'm going to go straight into Scotty because I feel like he might just go for Sticky Web. Yeah, so I can Encore him into that. Because I feel like he'll be tempted to go for a Bug Buzz. Ah, alright, not bad, not bad. Uh, fortunately, this is actually giving me a pretty solid switch into my defogger, which is great. As you may, it does make a fantastic double into his Rotom. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Do I risk it? I don't know if I risk it. Because he does still have both of his hazard setters still alive, so... Uh, if Even if I get rid of them right now, uh, they he definitely set them back up pretty soon. So I'm just going to go back into Reuniclus. As he does go for the overheat. Um, could he go for the trick room? Could he go for the recover? I'm going to try to go for recover. He just goes for overheat again. That's fine, because he's down to a very low amount of health now. Mm, but I don't really have anything to switch in, <laughs> other than the boss. <sighs> I think this is my opportunity to defog, actually. So he goes for the will o and misses. Fantastic. I can get a roost off here potentially as he just goes for the wheels begin. And now I'm going to make boss. Yeah, the wheels I should have thought of that. I'm glad I didn't go into like for alligator or something. As yeah, so he does go for a volt switch there. Uh but what does he have to switch into this thing really? Uh extreme speed finishes the Azelf, flare blitz for the dual blade, flare blitz, wild charge, cloister. Galvantula, can't really do that much, but he does decide to go into it, that's fine. I'm just going to go for a double extreme speed, that will be enough by far, as he does go for the Volt Switch. Uh, ooh, that does so much. That does too much. As he reveals the Life Orb, I could have gone for Flare... No, I don't not speed him. That's fine. Rotom comes out. This thing is kind of worth saving, is the problem. Yeah, it, it deals with the Azelf and the Calvantula. So I don't need my Aerodactyl anymore, so I can just sack this thing. Alright. See what he goes into. I think maybe even Memento on the Cloister and then Dragon Dance with my Feraligator, that might win me the game. I think it will. Let me see if a plus one Feraligator. 
outspeeds a Galvantula. 246, I'm at plus one. That doesn't help me, I need to do the math. That's half of 280, that's half of 28. 14, so plus 140. I do outspeed with plus one. That's good to know. As I'm gonna throw a timer on this guy, because he's taking quite the time to pick his next move. So yeah, plus one dragon dance should win me the game. Should. Uh, let's see how that does against uh, Cloyster. Uh, Shell Smash. See how crunch does. Wow, jeez, thing is bulky. <sighs> All right, he's really taking his time with this one. Maybe he's realizing the alligator threat. Uh, fortunately, he's not doing that much with rock blast, ice go spear. Rock blast is kind of doing a lot, actually. Um, well, let's check a uh, Rotom Heat. Rotom H. Defensive. Yeah, at this point, Waterfall takes it out. Alright, he's really getting close to, like, the timeout phase. So, uh, you know, I'm going to pause until he, he picks a move, so we'll be right back. Alright, guys, we are back, and uh, unfortunately, the opponent did decide to timeout. Uh, I was definitely interested in playing that match out. Uh, but one thing I did forget to do was actually make this uh, Sheer Force Life Orb for Alligator. And I'm also Adamant, I believe. So, like, I was, I was doing significantly less damage than I thought I was going to do. As I am Adamant, too. So that's awesome. Adamant and max speed. That's I love that set. That's so fun. Uh, yeah, I would have been doing a lot of damage, a lot more damage than I thought. Like, uh... Cloyster would be taking uh, over half from Crunch, and uh, I was looking at Dual Blade as well. Um, be taking 63-75% from Crunch, as well as Earthquake, uh, even with the Eevee Light, which is crazy. Uh, what else does he have? Yeah, I already calc the Rotom, and the Galangelo would be gone, and uh, yeah. So like, that was looking pretty good for me, and <laughs> he just decides to leave now. Uh, but anyway, we'll find another one. I don't need to pause it, I don't think. Alright, we got a good game here. Uh, Mandibuzz is going to be really useful in this game. Especially for the Crobat, Mian Shao. Uh, maybe even the Machamp, depending on what set it is. Although, obviously, it's probably no guard dynamic punch. I don't know how well Mandibuzz will be taking one of those, but... Uh, Aerodactyl will be really useful. Uh, depending on if the Mian Shao is scarfed. Uh... Also, I'm not sure about the Crobat's speed. I'm pretty sure I Mega one, no, Mega Aerodactyl will outspeed it. Let's check. Data Crobat. Data Aerodactyl. Alright, that's a speed type uh, as a non-Mega, but once I have Mega Evolve, I do outspeed it. As he also has an Azelf, too. That's crazy. Uh, I'm going to predict that, predict that to be his lead, and lead with my Scotty, and that, unfortunately, that does not work out for me. Yikes. And I do not have a switch into this thing. Good god. I kind of want to just like memento and go for game <laughs> with Cater. <laughs> That's definitely like something not to do first turn though. So uh, what I think I'll do is U-turn. I guess. What I could also do is Giga Drain. Jesus, thing if it's max speed, it outspeeds me, but I doubt it's max speed. Let's see, I'm at 364. Yeah, I'm max speed. He could just go be, be going for rock, so I'm just going to go for good drain. I'm just going to be a man. Because that does zero. As he does just go right for the sledge wave. <sighs> uh, I could risk the aqua tail here. 
Oops, wrong way. Let's try it. Mega Aerodactyl. Oh, we got offensive. Oh, people run adamant. Run jolly. Uh, geez, there's even an aqua tail on there. Let's see. Nitto Queen. I'm gonna guess defensive for some just worst case scenario, basically. Uh, let's put aqua tail on this thing. For a second, I thought I got aqua jet. That was crazy. All right, so that does not do enough. That's good to know. That's good to know. So I guess I'm going to soft serve. Uh, I could set up a trick room and start putting in a lot of work, honestly. But I bet I could live one hit. And you might just go for... You might switch. As well. Knowing that he can't hit me. Or he can't outco me. Hopefully, I'm like, best case scenario, it just goes for the rocks or something. Although I don't really have anything for the Hydreigon, unfortunately. So hopefully it takes him a little while to realize that. Or I can bluff the Focus Blast for a little while. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy's team is really threatening to me, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't really have, like, a solid move for the Hydreigon, either. As he does go for the Earth Power, and I'm able to get up a Trick Room. Uh, so I'll just go for a Psychic here. Take out the Nidoqueen, Queen, and please don't go into the Hydreigon. Just don't. Goes into my chain. Ooh, he lives it with, with the assault vest and does go for the knockoff. That's unfortunate. Because now he outspeeds everything but this. Or he might even outspeed this. But I'll go and do it anyway. Uh, if I just go for my own knockoff, it should combine with Rocky Helmet damage, should be able to finish him off. As he does go for that. Oof, that does zero. As we do break through the confusion, so we're able to take out the Machamp, which is really nice. Uh, so two big op big threats off the two big bulky threats off the field, which is nice. So he, all he's got left is his fast, fragile offense, and this thing. Yikes, this thing is scary. But you know what? I outspeed it in the trick room, and I break through the confusion, and I knock off the choice specs as he tricks to give it himself the Rocky helmet. <laughs> I'm just gonna U-turn. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna live. Crit, I don't know. I hope the crit didn't matter. Um, but what I can do is go into McBoss here, maybe. Actually, no, I can go into this thing. Finish him off with an Aerial Ace. Get my Mega Evolution off. Outspeed the rest of his team, unless he's Scarf on something, but. Yeah, I'll hit this thing with an Aerial Ace. I wish I could hit a, set up a Home Claws, but unfortunately, this thing would KO me if it did. And he does have the Rocky Helmet too, so that's unfortunate. As it does go Mian Shao. Makes me believe that he is a uh, Scarf going for a high jump kick. Well, let's let's see him miss. Nope, he doesn't. <laughs> what I can do is go into McBoss here. Uh, I do have close combat. I forgot I had close combat. That will be really used for the, for the Hydreigon. As I could go for an extreme speed here, and really reason really not to. As he goes into Crobat, and it looks like he has bulky Crobat, which is scary. He does have the Black Sludge, uh, but I'll go for a Wild. Oh, he goes for a Taunt. Nice. So he does. He predicts me to be the defensive set as I'm able to get a Wild Charge off and KO the Crobat. And now he probably realizes that he could just win with Scarf me and Shao. Uh, but okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ah, he's Scarf Hydreigon. Oh, it outspeeds me naturally. Of course, of course. Uh, well, unfortunately, that's going to be game. Uh, I can try to go for a Dragon Dance, I guess. I always expected Hydreigon to be slower than it is, for some reason. Hydreigon has like 90? What is it? 
Eight. Yeah, that's much faster. I, for some reason, I thought it was base 80. I don't know what I was thinking. But I think Dragon, I have to go for Dragon Dance, as he's able to just Oko me with Draco anyway. So GG. Uh, unfortunately, we get a loss. There's still a good game, but we do end our Classy Friday with a loss. But you know what? It's Classy Friday. Keep it classy. That's all you got to do. Uh, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Classy Friday, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe for Pokemon content every day here at Jiggly Dreams. And other than that, keep dreaming. I'll see you next time, and peace out.